So beyond the hype, the ridiculous tweets and the controversies, let's talk about the Final Mouse Ultralight 2, a gaming mouse that was sold in the tens of thousands in just a few minutes. At 120 US dollars, the Final Mouse Ultralight 2 is not a cheap gaming mouse, and after using it for the last few days, I have quite a few mixed things to say about it. So here it is, the Final Mouse Ultralight 2 Cape Town, the lightest gaming mouse on the market and easily one of the smallest as well. The honeycomb cutouts cover the entire mouse except for the left and right mouse buttons. Texture is fine here also, I didn't find that to be an issue even on the sides. If there's one thing that you should know about the Ultralight 2 right off the bat, it's that it's incredibly small. Take whatever you think is small like the G305 or FK2 and make it even smaller. So this makes the Ultralight 2 really biased towards a fingertip or claw grip. Palm gripping this mouse is going to be pretty much impossible unless your hands are incredibly small. So here are some silhouette comparisons against some other mice to show you just how small this thing really is and also a closer look at the shape. The Ultralight 2 is ambidextrous with a fairly simple shape and a comfortable taper towards the middle for grip. It doesn't feel too flat and long like the Zowie FK2 and it doesn't have a pronounced hump like the G305. Here it is against the Logitech G Pro Wireless which is one of the best gaming mice that you can buy at the moment and is very popular among pro FPS players. So just like the G Pro Wireless, the Ultralight 2's hump, that is the tallest point of the mouse, is pretty much dead center. Now let's talk about these. These are the Infinity Skins, essentially soft add-on panels for the side, rear, and top of the mouse. This allows you to change the feel of the Ultralight 2 tremendously, but they do have some serious problems. So you do get a few different thicknesses. For the sides and rear, you have 1.2, 2.0, and 2.5 millimeter thicknesses. And for the top pad, we just have 1.2. 0 millimeters. It's a 3M adhesive and for the most part it does work well, but the one on the rear is quite tricky to get on, it's pretty much impossible to get on without any significant folds or creases. I did try even using a hairdryer to warm up the pad a little bit before putting it on, but this didn't help that much. Even then, the application is rarely going to be perfect, and for a $120 gaming mouse it really should be perfect. I would much rather have seen actual plastic modular plates instead of these soft adhesive stickers. The Infinity skins do stick on quite quite well and they can be removed easily as well with a little bit of heat and a bit of patience. Just heat them up with a hairdryer and peel them back slowly. There might be some adhesive left on the mouse but that can easily be cleaned. The texture of the skins are a soft but dense foam and it is kind of gross but they do collect skin oils over time. I noticed some significant discoloration where my hands were making contact with them even after just a couple of days. I did try cleaning this with alcohol wipes but it barely came off. So again, modular plastic shells would have been a much better execution. Now the Ultralight 2 is advertised at a weight of 47 grams but as usual Final Mouse are a few grams off here seeing as the advertised weight doesn't supposedly include the cable. 51 grams though is still brutally light, this thing feels incredible to game with, more on that in just a second. When you add in a set of the Infinity Skins, that's going to bring the weight up to around 56 grams depending on what thickness you choose. So cables on wired mice recently are getting really, really good, and the Ultralight 2 is no exception, really soft light cable here that didn't bother me one bit when used with a bungee. Also the left and right mouse clicks are nice and light, just how I like them. I would say that these are the closest that I've ever seen to the perfect light clicks of the G Pro wireless. The scroll wheel clicks are nice and light also, but the wheel stepping could be a bit more defined. The side buttons have a bit of pre-travel and they do stick out quite a bit from the shell, but this is so that you can still reach them even with the 2.5mm infinity skin on there. Overall, the clicks are nice and light here too. The sensor here is the PMW3360. It's a bit dated at this point, but I personally don't see any problem with it. The polling rate is limited to 500Hz, which is not ideal, but I doubt that makes any real world difference compared to 1000Hz. We're talking about a difference of 1 milliseconds there, so your own input delay is going to be a lot more of a significant factor. DPI button is located between the left and right mouse buttons. It's quite small, and it cycles between 400, 800, 1600, and 3200 DPI. Now to test the liftoff distance of the sensor, 
I 3D printed these little plates that elevate the mouse by a small amount, but leave enough room for the sensor. Overall, liftoff distance for the Ultralight 2 is actually on the higher end. I measured it between 1.0 and 1.5 millimeters. Most other mice that I've tested are between 0.5 and 1.0 millimeters, and yes, that difference is noticeable. I will also be printing thinner plates for more accurate measurements for future reviews. Liftoff distance is personal preference at the end of the day, but lower is generally preferred. The mouse feet are great as well. They're not the craziest glide that I've ever felt, but in a way that's a good thing because the mouse is so light. I will say that they are very smooth, just not slippery. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let's talk about my own experience gaming with the Ultralight 2. So first things first, my hands are on the larger end. They're 19.5 centimeters down by 10.5 centimeters across, so they are larger hands. And when I first picked up the Ultralight 2, I immediately said to myself, this is impossible. There's no way that I could grip it at all that was comfortable initially. And that was coming from a much larger mouse, the G Pro Wireless. So I added the largest set of Infinity Skins to the Ultralight 2 and was finally able to use the mouse comfortably. And not only that, but after a couple of hours, things started to feel really, really good. I beat both of my high scores on Tile Frenzy and Ascended Tracking in Kovacs, scores that were previously set with the G Pro Wireless. And I kept beating those scores again and again the more I used the Ultralight 2 over time. It's hard to explain, but things started to feel automatic. Like, I just didn't have to think about how to hold the mouse and where to put it. And this was reflected in-game as well. The mouse felt like an extension of my hand because it's so light and small, with some of the lightest clicks ever. Honestly, I feel like my aim has never been this good, and the scores in Kovacs Aim Trainer reflect this directly, and this kind of annoys me. It annoys me because this mouse is expensive. It's impossible possible to buy and it's made by a company that everyone loves to hate. Not only that, but the Infinity Skins, the execution just feels so poor and cheap and I just honestly don't want to use them because I know if I keep using them, they're just gonna keep getting dirtier and dirtier. Thankfully though, the Ultralight 2 does have some competition. On the way, we have the Cooler Master MM710, the Endgear XM1, the Model O Minus from Glorious. All three of those mice I will be reviewing quite soon, so definitely subscribe if you haven't already. If you are currently using the Ultralight 2, I'd love to know your thoughts and comments down below. It is an incredibly small mouse and I doubt this is going to be comfortable for the majority of people. So as always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.